what's going on, you guys? It's me, L.A., pronounced like L.A. like the city. I'm not from there, but I'm breezy with another celebrity news and things. And I would like to take some time right now to talk about Charles Stanley. I'll be reporting to you from the article of 11 Alive News, but I would like to say this morning when... My family and I were getting ready to start our day, get our son ready for school and he to work. My husband told me that, you know, the pastor had transitioned. So I do want to take some time to actually um, pray tri- pay tribute to him. So we're going to go from 11alivenews.com and start with their article. Iconic pastor. No. Iconic Atlanta pastor Charles Stanley dies. Charles Stanley was a powerful pastor at the First Baptist Church of Atlanta. His organization, In Touch Ministries, reached millions across the world. Author Akila Winters published 12 16 p.m. EDT, April 18, 2023. Updated at 5 20 p.m. EDT time, April 18, 2023. Atlanta, the First Baptist Church of Atlanta community, is mourning the loss of, arguably, Atlanta's most prominent pastors, who was the driving engine of one of the largest faith organizations in the world. Dr. Charles Stanley died at the age of 90. Stanley led the church for 51 years. In Atlanta, he was known as one of the most distinguished faith leaders in the city's history. Stanley founded a new way of life and faith with his organization In Touch Ministries, which became a global conglomerate. He would ultimately become a powerhouse in his devotion. Wikipedia.com has Charles Stanley. Charles Frazier Stanley, born September 25th, 1932, Passed away April 18th, 2023. Was an American Baptist pastor and writer. He was a senior pastor of First Baptist Church in Atlanta for 49 years and took on Emetria's status in 2020. Side note, the word I pronounced is spelled E as in elephant, M as in moon, E R as in Rick and Morty, I as in ice cream, T-U-S, E-M-E-R-I-T-U-S, just for clarity purposes. He founded and was president of In Touch Ministries, which widely broadcast his sermons through television and radio. He also served two one-year terms as president of the Southern Baptist Convention from 1984 to 1986. Charles Stanley, you will be missed. I do remember Charles Stanley. I was born in 1984, and that's pretty cool because he became the president of Southern Baptist Church the year I was born. I was born in 1984. March 23rd. I can say, having said such, I literally grew up with him. Um, Our parents were heavily religious and there was a lot of church sermons going on in the background, primarily from people of our um, ethnicity, African-American people. But when we moved into the suburbs at that time, what was considered the suburbs, I I noticed that um, our faith walk well, their faith walk changed. It got stronger and kind of worse. But also my mom was introduced to, I think, cable or something. Or we actually had a functioning TV. So she had access to see a different spectrum of um, followers of Christ on the televangelist sector. And Charles Stanley was one of them. There was a plethora of televangelist people going around in the early 90s, you know. But the one that I gravitated to to the most that gave me peace that I chose not to share with my parents too tough was Charles Stanley because his voice was so nice. Um, It was clear, you know, I made comparisons to Charles Stanley into my head that he was like the um, Mr. Rogers neighborhood for the followers of Christ. So I compared Charles Stanley based on my comprehension and adaptation to him as being Mr. Rogers. So I really like Mr. Rogers because he made me feel safe when I watched TV and what he said was always kind. He never put on airs that he was perfect and you can tell that he wasn't perfect but the sheer fact that both Mr. Rogers and Stan, Mr. Charles Stanley, Reverend Charles Stanley, excuse me, both were so comfortable in the fact that they knew that they were just man in a position of power and it didn't go to their head made everything okay it helped me loosen up in the fact that I don't have to be perfect to 
quote unquote walk this faith walk of a follower of Christ. Um, he taught the word is what they say fairly and justly. He never shoved the word of God down your throats, didn't make you feel guilty about anything. Um, he will be missed. Um, he did a lot of great work. I can say, though, my husband and I do agree that, you know, he lived a long life. So I don't feel bad of his passing. He did such a great work in the world and in, in, in my life, too. Um, I'm very happy that he contributed a lot to this world. Um, I don't think anything far as his legacy from the outside looking in there wasn't a stone that was unturned that was not unturned in reference to him being down here just working and being a good light to people charles stanley was a great teacher and someone i would recommend that you go to before um things get darker because um as times changed i have noticed since my birth of being born in 84 till now that the um the following and the beliefs and things the doctrines have changed they're a little more broadened now brought into the fact where it's getting a little beyond cluttered it's too many mixed signals now so if you need a beacon a stronger beacon on morality until you develop your own um identity your own walk I recommend going back to Charles Stanley because he at least gives you the basics and then it'll be up to you. He'll leave it up to you to decide whether you want to take being a follower of Christ or just go your own way. I can't say that. Ladies and gentlemen, I recommend anyone who's walking on the faith walk or trying to be better morale, morally, start with Charles Stanley because he gives you the meats and potatoes, potatoes and he gives it to you clearly as possible and clear enough to me and effectively enough so you can make a sound decision on which way you want to go. How about that? My name is LA pronounced like LA like the city. I'm not from there, but I'm breezy. I'm happy to have been a part of someone great. Charles Stanley, see you on the other side, bro.